Thank you, Sherry, and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Tesla's second quarter 2020 Q&A webcast. I'm joined today by Elon Musk, Zachary Kirkhorn, and a number of other executives. Our Q3 results were announced at about 1.15 p.m. Pacific time in the update deck we published at the same link as this webcast. During the question and answer portion of today's call, please limit yourselves to one question and one follow-up. First of all, I'd like to thank the Tesla team for exceptional execution in the second quarter, despite uh, tremendous difficulties. Um, they've done an incredible job, and it's an, it's an honor to work with such a great team. So, and as a result, we were able to achieve uh, our fourth consecutive prof profitable quarter. Um, and although the automotive industry was down about 30% year over year in the first half of the year, uh, we managed to grow deliveries in the first half of the year. So, despite a, a massive industry, industry decline, we actually went up. We're also very excited to announce that we're going to be building our next gigafactory uh, in, in Texas. Uh, it's going to be a right. Um, Near Austin, it's not, not, it'll be about, I'll, I'll, I'll just go into a bit of detail on this, um, and then I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions. Um, but the, lo the location is uh, five minutes from Austin International Airport and 15 minutes from downtown Austin, and it's about 2,000 acres. And we're going to make, make it, I think, a factory that is going to be stunning. It's right on the Colorado River, uh, so we're actually going to have, a, we're going to have a boardwalk. Uh, where there'll be a hiking, biking trail. It's going to basically be an ecological paradise. Birds in the trees, butterflies, fish in the stream, um, and it'll be open to the public as well, so not, not closed and, and, and only Tesla. So if, if anyone's interested in working at uh, Giga, Te Giga Texas uh, uh, with engineering, production, whatever the case may be, um, uh, please let us know. This is uh, We're going to be uh, doing a, a, major, a major factory there. <clears throat> uh, and it's also where we'll be doing uh, we'll be doing Cybertruck there, the Tesla Semi, and we'll be doing Model Three and Y for the uh, eastern half of North America. Let's see. Moving on to other subjects, uh, uh, solar. Uh, we recently adjusted the pricing of our retrofit solar. Uh, so Tesla Solar is the lowest cost solar in the United States. Uh, and we added a lowest, lowest cost guarantee and a money back guarantee. So we're very confident that people will, will love our solar product, whether it's the solar retrofit or solar roof. Um, our solar is now 30% cheaper than the U.S. average. After the federal, federal tax credit, uh, Tesla solar now costs $1.49 per watt. In conclusion, uh, uh, I'd like to again say thanks for all the hard work of the Tesla team, uh, achieving our first full year of profitability in the company history uh, was incredibly difficult. Um, and, and just as a result of the hard work of a, a lot of people from Tesla Worldwide. Um, and, and yeah, just think about the next, the next 12 to 18 months, uh, we'll have three new factories in place. Uh, you know, things are looking great with uh, Giga Berlin. Uh, and um, we'll, we'll have Cybertruck, Semi, Roadster, uh, full self-driving. There's so much to be excited about. Uh, it's really hard to kind of fit into this uh, call, but uh, the, the sheer amount of hardcore engineering, especially on the uh, you know autonomy and the manufacturing engineering front is mind blowing. Uh, and then of course there's factory day, which is you know coming up pretty soon. Um, and I think that's that's really gonna surprise people by, by just how how much there is to see. Um, so, uh, with that, uh, thanks again for your support and our long-term mission. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, having a great journey with you to create amazing products and continue scaling it. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, I think, I've never been more optimistic or excited about the future of Tesla and then the history of the company. The, the actual major milestone that's happening right now is, is really a transition of the autonomy system or the cars like AI, if you will. You just, you know, just, it's just hard to convey just how much better a, a fully 4D system would work. It does work. Um, it, it, it's capable of things that, it, that if, you, if you just look looking at things as individual pictures as opposed to 
video, like basically like you go from like individual pictures to uh, surround video. The the the, the call will seem to have just like a giant improvement. Um, I know we'll probably roll it out later this year. Um, but it, you know we'll be able to do traffic lights, stop turns, troughs, everything. You know pretty much. Um, and then it will be a, a long march of nines, essentially. How, how many nines of reliability um, are okay? Um, so it'll definitely be way better than human, but how much better than human does it need to be? Um, so that, 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 that's actually going to be the real work. There's just a massive amount of work with each kind of order of magnitude of reliability. Um, But you'll see, you'll see it happen, and if you plot the points on a curve, it'll be kind of obvious where it's headed. Um, AI in general, I think, is something, you know, I've been saying this, banging this AI drum for a decade. We should be concerned about where AI is going. Um, the people I see being the most wrong about AI are the ones who are very smart, because they can't imagine that a computer could be way smarter than them. That, that's the flaw in their logic. Yeah, vertical integration is extremely important for this. Um, but the supply chain, if you, if, you, if you put like a GPS tracker on, on a molecule from when it got mined to when it was in a usable product, it would look insane. <laughs> like in, in, it would be like, wow, it went around the world like six times. Um, so with vertical integration, maybe you can only go around the world once. You know, it would be a huge improvement. Or not even like half a, I think half a, I think you get, Vertical integration alone could probably get you an order of magnitude improvement. Um, so, yeah. Um, I mean, Jerome, you want to? Yeah, I think the, the focus for us is uh, um, in increasing the um, CapEx uh, efficiency. This is something that uh, we've been working very hard uh, for the past three years. Um, and you can see that uh, we can build new factories for less amount of money and much faster. Yeah. Uh, those things go together. Um, yeah, it's a better it's a better factory for less money in less time. Yeah, less money means less time. Yeah. So that's uh, a, a great advantage, and um, we're also reducing this, and it still is a lot uh, the amount of inefficiencies. We want every operation to add value yeah. to the vehicle. M value meaning moving the atoms closer to their final state. You know, so we do yeah. not want any robot that just moves things. Yes, or, adding or, or a parts. person. It, 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 yeah, like, yeah. In fact, it's like we, we want to be super respectful of people's labor. If, yeah. we, if we're asking somebody to do something, are we sure it's useful? Are, are we asking, asking them to spend their time in a way that is respectful of their time? Um, but, but but it's like, wow, the potential for improvement is is tremendous. And like, I just want to be clear. Here at Tesla, we love manufacturing. It's awesome. Um, and I, I really think more smart people should be working on manufacturing. It's and we like, want more people. Yes, we, we exactly. Can't find <laughs> we, people. We, we, yeah. we do. If people are interested in designing new lines and uh, trying to do things different, you know, Tesla's got a job for you. And now we've got jobs yeah. everywhere. It's not only in California. Yep. We've got jobs in China, in Berlin, in Austin, Texas. Yeah. And in California, if you uh, so there's plenty of uh, exciting places, and all these places will do original work and challenging, yes. and meaningful work. Yeah. Okay, and now we can shift to retail investor questions on uh, say.com. The first one is Tesla Energy seems widely ignored by Wall Street, despite Elon, <laughs> despite Elon comments about growth rate exceeding automotive. Could Tesla share more detail on current or planned projects to help investors better understand the business outlook? How disruptive is Tesla's auto bidder technology? Yeah, well, I, I, I can't emphasize enough. I think long-term Tesla Energy will be of the, the, roughly the same size as Tesla Automotive. So, uh, I mean, the energy business collectively is bigger than the automotive business. So you say, like, you know, how, how big is the energy sector? Bigger than automotive, um, so and and in order to achieve a sustainable energy future, we have to have sustainable energy generation, uh, which I think is going to be primarily solar, uh, and, and you know 
followed by wind. And those are intermittent, so you need to have a lot of batteries to store the um, store the energy because the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. So, uh, so there's like three elements of the sustainable energy future: wind and solar, sustainable energy generation, uh, battery storage, and electric transport. Those three things. Um, and the mission of Tesla is to accelerate sustainable energy. So. I can't emphasize enough the, 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 the like, yeah, the, 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 the bat, battery and solar will both be enormous, um, and they kind of have to be in order for us to have a sustainable future, uh, and we've got a great product roadmap on that front as well, so we've been shipping the mega pack, it's very well received. Um, I mean, the, the real limitation on Tesla growth is uh, is cell production. At, at an affordable price, but that's the that's the real limit. Um, so um, you know that's why we're you know, we're, we're going to talk about a lot more about this on Battery Day um, because that, this is a fundamental sca scaling constraint. And, and and any part of that at that supply chain or processing of uh, at the cell level will, will will be the limiting factor. So uh, you know whatever it may be. Um, anywhere from mining to refining, and there's many steps on the ref refining to, you know, cathode and anode formation, cell formation. Uh, whatever the choke point is, that will set the growth, the growth rate. Um, and so, you know, we, 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 um, we expect to expand our business with Panasonic, with CATL, with LG, possibly with others. Um, um, and, uh, you know, and there's a lot more to say on that front on battery day. Thank you. And uh, the second question is, uh, now that it's time to bring the Tesla Semi to volume production, can you share more detail on production plans? What weekly production rate is considered volume production, and uh, when does Tesla expect to reach that rate? Sure. Yeah, so what's our production next year, as we announced before? I'm personally very excited about the project. I can't wait. Uh, we do have a few trucks that keep driving around and that keep delivering cars. Uh, but uh, we're going to accelerate that. I want to be clear that uh, the first few units uh, we will use ourselves, uh, Tesla, to carry our own freight, uh, probably mostly between Fremont and Reno, which is a fantastic test route. Uh, we want to prove that we have re really good reliability. I mean, so far, the early units do have it, but we'll, we'll do that at the larger scale. And we have also promised uh, some early units to some um, long-term, very patient and supportive customers, and we'll do that. Uh, now we have uh, more sales coming up in uh, next year, as uh, Elon just pointed out, so we can uh, increase uh, the um, uh, diversity of the portfolio. It didn't make sense up to now to do it, yeah. uh, but uh, uh, we'll be ready, and um, that's yeah, maybe a little bias. I'm very excited about this. and. Uh, we have a lot of very unique technology that we're always dreaming about that we will be putting into that semi. It will be just awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just there's like two general classes of, of cell. There's like iron phosphate and then the nickel-based. Uh, nic the nic nickel-based cells have um, higher energy density, so longer range. Uh, obviously, those are needed for something like the semi, um, where you know every Every unit of mass that you add in battery pack, you have to subtract in cargo. So you, it's very important to have a mass efficient and long range uh, pack for full batteries. Um, however, what we're seeing with uh, our that passenger vehicles is that our powertrain efficiency and uh, so tire efficiency, you know, drag coefficient, like basically all of the things that, like, you know, our HVAC uh, go, going to a heat pump. Um, Basically, our total vehicle efficiency has gotten good enough with uh, Model 3, for example, that we actually are comfortable having an iron phosphate battery pack in Model 3 in China, um, and, you know, and that, that'll be in volume production later this year. Um, so we think that you know, getting a range uh, that is in the high 200s, uh, you know, basically, but we think you probably get a, a range of almost 300 miles. Uh, with an iron phosphate pack, taking into account a whole bunch of uh, of powertrain and other vehicle efficiencies. Um, 
and, and that, that frees up a lot of capacity for things like the Tesla Semi um, and, and uh, you know, other projects that require higher energy density. 